Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Kulshreshta. It's One Place Sports' honor to be broadcasting this international webinar all across the world. Working out, training hard, of course, is required, but it's not enough. Relaxation is absolutely essential. This international webinar is a wonderful platform um, to share about Olympic education, Olympic values. Our experience and expertise to help set up Olympic Studies centers based at the university level in India. It is a, a great honor and a pleasure to be here with you uh, today. This international webinar is a wonderful platform um, to share about Olympic education, Olympic values all around the world. Um, I feel very honored uh, to be part of the very prestigious speakers and um, I am looking forward to uh, share with all the participants at the end during the Q&A session. But of course, as uh, you might uh, see, you also have my email, my contact, so really feel free to contact me for uh, further discussion, further collaboration. Um, I'm talking in front of you today as uh, Dr. Bisham Singh, uh, said as uh, president of the French National Olympic Academy, but uh, I'm also a scholar in linguistics and um, I will very much appreciate if uh, there is any initiative or research program that we can also try to get together um, regarding uh, this topic. For today, 40 minutes, it's, it's not a lot and uh, there is so much to say. Uh, about uh, what I wanted to share with you today and what I titled Olympic and Paralympic Education Friends on the Way to Paris uh, 2024. This title, of course, um, is uh, not random uh, and uh, I'm, I'm sure you have noticed the, the key element that I would like to share with you. Uh, the fact that uh, Olympic and Paralympic education are both mentioned all together and the fact that uh, I'm also referring uh, already uh, to uh, the Olympia 2024 uh, it means also that there is a, a strong connection uh, between the organization of Olympic Games and uh, the Olympic education uh, in, in one country. This is a huge opportunity and this is this opportunity that I would like to to discuss with you today with uh, uh, some um, sharings. Um, this would be uh, an open discussion. Um, the idea is to consider Olympic and Paralympic specificities um, towards sport uh, because I don't want to be too provocative or provocative at all but uh, with some scholars, uh, we share the idea that uh, uh, sports uh, uh, could be understood as sports with a plural, with lots of differences. And the values behind uh, can be very, very uh, diverse. But Olympism uh, with a big O, including Paralympism is the idea to bring values inside, so to have the opportunity not to practice without any purpose and not to practice uh, with uh, possible uh, bad behavior, but to include positive and humanistic values, Olympic values uh, in those practices. The idea would be to share and compare some practices, best and worst, because uh, most of the time we tend to just focus on the, the best practices. This is good because we can share those good ones. But we also learn from our failures. We also learn from what we, we don't do best. And uh, so learning from the mistakes uh, makes us uh, stronger and um, I hope we can also uh, discuss briefly on what sometimes didn't work 
in an education uh, program and what could be um, enhanced and upgraded or, or, or at least modified to, to work better. Um, two tiny precision, uh, there is no fixed recommendation strictly emerging from this presentation. My perspective uh, at the end is only France and uh, I'm not representing uh, French Olympic education just by myself. This is my personal vision that uh, I have tried to share and develop uh, with my dear colleagues of the French National Olympic Academy, discussing as much as possible with the French National Olympic Committee, who is very important and supportive for academies, and in particular for ours in our country. And this is really a brief overview of my career, just very simple, just to, to set from uh, individual example, how come we go more to the general principle and then uh, how we uh, reach, sorry, how we reach uh, then finally uh, the French perspective. So Olympic education for me was also um, encountered the Olympic Games in 2004 um, with two uh, childhood friends. We took a car and we drove all the way to Greece. It's quite a long drive from France, but it was a discovery of something just amazing that I've never seen before. So intense, so powerful that um, all the involvement that I already had uh, as a sport person, like uh, uh, sport uh, participant, but also sport young leader, I wanted to, to do much more. And uh, my chance was to be selected by friends to participate in the Young Participant Session 2006 of the IOA, International Olympic Academy. Um, I'm sure uh, you, most of you know this uh, wonderful academy and it is, this gives me the opportunity to do things. Uh, my dear uh, colleague and friend Niraj Kumar Mera, uh, who I met uh, over there. And um, since 2006, the involvement uh, grow bigger and uh, also the chance to attend the session uh, was also uh, more important and uh, I was very fortunate to participate in director session 2011-2013 but also last year and this was all linked also with uh, the opportunity of being more involved nationally from um, vice president in charge of research I became president of the French National Olympic Academy this is very quickly and uh, humbly um, uh, illustration of how I got in touch with uh, Olympism and how come um, people can be connected uh, with uh, those values and then implement them in their personal life. But I was very lucky, I was very fortunate to travel, then to meet the right person, to get in touch with very passionate and stimulating programs. And I know that not everybody, everybody can get this chance. So I think that now it is also the duty of NOAs around the world, but also other organization and of course, Olympic committees to get connected and get the chance to all the kids, but also everyone, adults and elderly, to get in touch with Olympism. But Olympism, what it is, because the question is, if you ask to most of the people, you would get a lot of different answers. And um, as, a, as a scholar, and most of all, maybe as a linguist, I, I, I like to stick with the definitions and the quotations. So, um, and uh, the wonderful work of uh, Professor Muller, uh, referring uh, in this quotation to uh, the work of uh, Malter 1996, 
um, quick summary uh, refers to Olympism as an entire collection of values which over and above physical strength are developed when we participate in sport. But as I mentioned before, participating in sports um, does not include automatically values. So this is why Olympism has to be brought to really um, structure uh, this uh, uh, kind of uh, philosophy and this kind of ethics um, regarding uh, uh, the practice in general and physical education in sport in general. So, Olympic education. Olympic education uh, still uh, regarding uh, Miller's work uh, 2004. Olympic education endeavors to provide a universal education or development of the whole human individual in contrast to the increasingly specialized education encountered in many specialized disciplines. Consequently, it can only be based on the fundamental values of the human personality. In terms of pedagogy, um, it is very interesting because here you have uh, a program, educational program, that tends to be universal, but also we know by scientific work that most of the education programs and systems really work efficiently when they are very well adapt and specialized. So what I will try to show you today is the balance between universality and specificity. And just to finish on the, uh, the discussion of uh, Olympic education definition, uh, I'm sorry, there's a tiny mistake, it's education, of course. I would like to refer to um, uh, a pretty recent work of Patrick 2017 <coughs> and I and I quote as Copen in the Wigmore 2010 art Olympic education has frequently been presented as an apedagogical opportunity or as Noel 2008 calls it a knowledge-based orientation focus on learning about the history and facts associated with the Olympic Games ancient and modern, also rarely including the Paralympics, every four years in line with the Summer Olympic cycle. This uh, quote is a little bit um, uh, critical, of, or some very much critical, because of course, uh, Summer and Olympic cycle can be related to um, uh, election cycle in most of the countries but uh, we should not forget the winter olympics and uh, uh, there are a lot of excellent uh, winter olympic education program and i'm just mentioning winter right now when i talk in front of you but it's olympic education there is no summer olympic education or winter uh, olympic uh, education of course but very interestingly we can see <coughs> appearing the term Paralympics because in this process there is like a cycle a cycle related to events <coughs> sorry Olympic and Paralympic Games and so having this Olympic and Paralympic Games this can give us the opportunity to talk Olympic and Paralympic education or how we call it uh, most of the time in France, Olympic education, but we have a big O, of course, including uh, Paralympism. Very quickly, uh, very rapidly, um, Olympic values, of course, you all know about excellence, respect, and friendship. But it's very interesting to look <coughs> how the IOC has um, taken this core Olympic values, three main ones, but has adapted them to uh, nowadays. And uh, really, if you look, it's from 2020. Um, how come Olympic values in education is first defined? 
IOC talk about holism um, as a philosophy of life, exalting and combining in a balance all the quality of body, will, and mind. And very importantly, this is uh, me emphasizing blending sports with culture and education. Olipism seeks to create a way <coughs> of life based on the joy found in the effort. The educational values of good example and respect to universal, fundamental, ethical principle. And very importantly, I should I emphasize it, universal, fundamental, ethical principles. Because then you see how come this can be uh, impacted uh, in this. Paralympic values, very quickly. Unfortunately, sometimes they are not uh, that much uh, or as much known as the Olympic values. Determination, equality, inspiration, and courage. Courage, uh, as it is uh, defined by the IPC, means that it encompasses the unique spirit of the Paralympic athlete who seek to accomplish with the general public deems unexpected but what the athletes know as a truth. The, ter the, the determination is the manifestation of the ideal that Paralympic athletes push their physical ability in the absolute limit. Sorry, inspiration. <coughs> when intense and personal affection is bigoted from the stories and accomplishments of Paralympic athletes and the effect of applying the spirit to one's personal life. And finally, equality. Paralympic sports acts as an agent for change to break down social barriers and discrimination for persons with women impairment. Of course, there are some specificities, as uh, you can see in the in the in those definitions. But um, you can see the the basement. You can see the the ground roots of uh, those values, and uh, they they are very much connected. They are very very close, and you can see how uh, they can be. Uh, related. This next slide just uh, show you a brilliant example of um, uh, Olympic education because now that we have uh, uh, spoken about the principle, now that we have uh, shared about uh, the definition, we have to see how it is implemented. And the University of Tsukuba in the preparation of uh, Tokyo 2020 and now, as I should say, maybe Tokyo 2021, um, uh, this uh, wonderful university in Japan has creating an uh, Olympic education program. So now you see from a philosophy, from a spirit, we have to go through and to uh, implement actions. And those actions in terms of education go through programs and events and see how come uh, we will uh, connect with them. But the biggest example <coughs> is the OVIP program uh, uh, led by the IOC with a, a 2.0 version from uh, uh, 2018. Um, I will not read too much because uh, I don't want to be, to be boring and um, I will try to be as active as possible and share with you on the basis of a, dis uh, of a discussion. But um, you can see uh, on the screen that uh, there is uh, uh, clearly the inspiration of the founder of the modern uh, Olympic game, Baron Pierre de Coubertin, who wanted to have this for each individual to use sport as a possible source for inner improvement. But um, in France, we are not afraid also to be uh, critical because uh, uh, Pierre de Coubertin uh, didn't say only positive things. And uh, when we look at the work of someone, even if this person is very famous and has done a very important and positive work, 
uh, we also have to look at what he has done maybe wrong. And um, we also question and put into the context uh, uh, some publication of some speeches from him that were very offensive and that, that were totally wrong. But as I mentioned in the very beginning, uh, we also learn from our mistake and uh, we, we take the positivity uh, of his work, but we also look particularly uh, to uh, the negativity of uh, uh, discrimination that uh, hopefully has been moved and removed uh, uh, from uh, uh, um, his uh, speeches and his discourses. Um, getting back to OVAP 2.0, uh, you can see that the program goes beyond artificial boundaries and aims to create a sustainable platform to address societal issues. And very interestingly, you see five points. What this Olympic education can bring to rise uh, sedentary behavior, to increase uh, urbanization, persistent inequalities for girls and women, the lack of social inclusion and coherence, and the continued conflict of world war instability. So you see those problems that want to be addressed and that they want to be uh, fought. Uh, they are not uh, as general, uh, I don't want to say vague, but um, uh, general as uh, the question of excellence, respect and friendship. The IOC very interestingly and very uh, positively has tried to implement and face uh, much more practical and realistic problems that could be dealt with um, uh, uh, Olympic education. Um, I'm talking a lot and I see that there is uh, uh, a lot to say. I will not go through uh, this uh, part in detail, but you can see that um, universality is the key because those values are universal. But the question is, how do we apply them? And this led to uh, a very important uh, question um, uh, also discussed in, in Miller 2004, uh, the future of Olympic education. And at that time, he was already pointing out the role of media. And 2004 television was very, very big. It still is, but in, two, in 2020, uh, internet, uh, especially to uh, the youth, uh, can be replaced. And we have to look at how it can be uh, uh, a real challenge. Because just a tiny example, <coughs> here you have on the screen um, uh, a website, official website, just showing rankings for medals during uh, uh, one Olympic game. But if you look at the Olympic Charter, which is the fundamental text to which we should always refer to, we see that there should be such as rankings in terms of countries, number of medal, because there is, of course, Olympic Games as competition, but the Olympic Games are competitions between athletes in individual or team. But this is not a competition between countries. One fundamental aspect of um, Olympism is to promote peace. And you don't promote peace if you can create some tension into a national level between countries. So now I want to uh, address the French perspective and look into uh, uh, a French program called Olympism uh, in Action. It's something created uh, in uh, 2010 and around. And this is very interesting because um, this is not something <coughs> so new because it was 10 years ago, but this is something that is related to the bid of Paris 2024. So there is also a kind of legacy in bidding into the Olympic game. There is the legacy of the game, 
but there is also a legacy in the bid. And um, I cannot um, uh, read all the very interesting work by Dr. Johan Blondel um, presenting in the IOA and published in 2011, but um, the idea was to uh, get material and help the educators, help the physical education professor, but also the um, 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 educators of uh, and professor in general in elementary school to implement this Olympic spirit and the Olympic values in their teaching. So in France, um, I'm not sure you can see um, uh, clearly enough on this uh, um, uh, little uh, um, drawing, but um, a little bit more clearly, you can see here the question and the key, the start, is the promotion of Olympism from school to university. And then we have a very interesting concept called playdagogy. It's to play, it's pedagogy of play. You play, but in the same time, you learn. The idea is to learn differently and to learn through sport and pedagogical innovation uh, based on values that will be implemented in the program. What does it um, uh, create concretely? Concretely, it means that uh, <coughs> we will so add uh, elements uh, that are very important in terms of um, uh, values. This is why I talk about uh, Olympic and Paralympic uh, values, because there is this very important implement of uh, Paralympic <coughs> and uh, uh, consideration of uh, disabilities uh, of access in sports. And um, from 2017 to 2000, uh, 2016 to 2017, we had very official program. This academic year at that time was officially by the Ministry of Sports, Ministry of Education and Ministry of Higher Education in France called the Year of Olympism and Paralympism in school, college and universities. And since that, we try to mobilize to get in touch with one million uh, young people um, to give you a perspective uh, France is much much smaller than India and smaller than a lot of other countries we are uh, now almost uh, 70 million so it's it's a huge proportion and it's uh, in particular a huge proportion of um, our youth. Just to finish and go very quickly, uh, there are four main uh, concrete realization that uh, uh, the French National Olympic Committee, the French National Olympic Academy, but also other uh, NGOs, association and, and ministries uh, have led. Let me go quickly through, uh, through those four. The first one uh, is the Olympic classes, or what is was called uh, Class Olympic, but translated in English, uh, Olympic Youth Camps. From 2006, and the very massive work of my predecessor in the French NOA, uh, uh, help and now lead by the French NOC, uh, we have targeted uh, 8 to 11 years old pupils uh, and we created a one-week residential camp with scientific, cultural, and artistic sports activity. This was to uh, experience uh, communal life for one week. Cultural and scientific activity, very important because we talk a lot about culture, but in that program, we emphasize uh, uh, the work of science and the importance of science you can practice physics or even chemistry 
to understand how the world is around us, even for a kid practicing sport. And this all together is, is very, very important and is very innovative. It's still uh, working and brings fantastic uh, result. This program is free of charge. We give all the content um, to the educators and professor that want to create this one week. Here you have uh, a picture of um, the children uh, that are practicing a ceremony <coughs> which can help them to practice their geography, their history and some philosophy. Then there is the label Generation 2024, the label Generation 2024. This is a way to include and to um, uh, push the institution to officially involve and uh, practice sports with the Olympic values. This pushes them to organize events uh, regarding 2024. And um, this is a, a, a wonderful tool uh, to spread also the um, uh, Olympic values all around France. Because Paris 2024 uh, don't want to be uh, the Olympic game of the capital, Paris, but wants to be the Olympic game of the whole country. And for example, very interestingly, um, surfing uh, is included. Uh, and surfing would be in Tahiti, in the French Polynesian, so in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. It won't be in, in an artificial wave uh, built in Paris. It will be in a natural result, in a wonderful historical for this uh, sport place. And um, this is an inclusive model, very important. Uh, third one, the Olympic and Paralympic week. We have created a specific week uh, in February to uh, enhance the value of sport, but more specifically uh, disabled sport by organizing shared sporting events. But also we wanted to enhance the value of sport as educational tool and setting up activity related to uh, Olympic values. Um, here you probably uh, don't see clearly enough, but it means more than 1,300 projects during just one week uh, impacted uh, more than two, uh, uh, 200,000 um, uh, people with more than 150 Olympians or Paralympians, great champions that will get in, in touch with kids. And every time we have an Olympian, we have also a Paralympian that goes with him or with her uh, to connect with, with the kids. It's also in France, but it's also abroad because there are French schools uh, overseas uh, in the uh, also maybe Institut Francais, uh, where you French uh, cultural centers where you can get in touch. And to finish the Olympic day, you all know that there is uh, uh, the Olympic Day on June uh, 23rd. You have this wonderful illustration. You see a track for people running on the Seine, the river in the middle of Paris. Wonderful sport activity. They will launch in 2017, just before uh, Paris uh, won the bid. It has created a true dynamic. Olympic Day was celebrated, of course, in France before 2017. We celebrate, we celebrated uh, since its creation. But thanks to the bid, we have now the legacy of this wonderful dynamic of involving the people, now putting into the preparation of the game. And hopefully, uh, if I take still on the metaphor, surfing on that wave for after. 2024 and this wonderful dynamic. So some conclusion, I tried to respect the, the timing. Um, uh, Olympic and Paralympic. We don't make difference in the logo. If you see Paris 2024, this is the very first time uh, one Olympic game has the same logo for Olympic Games and Paralympic Games. 
Uh, I can talk more about the logo, but uh, what I want to focus here is that uh, it's the same image. So we want to unify uh, uh, those values under the umbrella of Olympic values, but not forgetting about some specificities because of course disability is most of the time possibly a, a limitation but it's not always the case and uh, regarding uh, possible disabilities uh, they might be very much different and those specificities has to be included into the universality and this, this is the universality of the humanistic and positive values of uh, Olympic values that we want to share. Education uh, has to be seen and put in the legacy programs. Uh, here you see um, a silver medalist um, uh, gummies from the French team of basketball in a French school in Japan uh, sharing with kids. This universality is to go through the world go through the all different countries, go through the different kind of sport practices and even academic disciplines. I will again say that we put a lot of science as much as possible in the, in, in the program. Um, this is a, a legacy of my predecessor that uh, I, I want to, to, to keep on working with uh, all the participant of the French NOA. So I hope um, I could, uh, I have, sorry, uh, share with you uh, a certain vision. I hope um, some of the example can inspire you. And I so hope that uh, maybe we can uh, share some event or program uh, in, the, in the near future.